today we're going to draw some of my favorite things, critters that you find in the tide pools of Oregon. Now, I must say, I really love tide pools and I love the Oregon coast and there are so many different things that we can draw. So what I want to do is I want to show you how to draw some of my favorite things and then we'll put them into their own little tide pool. So back when I was in high school, I took this class on um, uh, marine biology from one of my favorite teachers and he had us memorize all of these different things that we'd see. And so one of the first things that you'll see are California mussels. California mussels are those big black shells that kind of got some white on them and they grow in little clusters and they attach to the rocks with these little fuzzy things. And so an easy way to draw California mussels is, as you saw, you're kind of making an eyeball shape. So you can imagine that a, there's a giant eyeball, but you start with just kind of an oval, little pointy. And notice that I'm drawing pretty light. When I'm done drawing with my pencil, what I like to do is darken it in. And when you darken it in with whatever nice pen you wanna use, notice we try to make long, smooth lines. See how that works? So even though with pencils we're doing rough shapes, when you're darkening in them with a line, you want to do nice smooth strokes. So if you catch yourself with a pencil trying to draw that muscle shape with lots of short lines like this, it actually is harder and it makes for rougher lines. So try and practice doing long smooth lines. And muscles are great because you're not going to get it wrong. They're pretty simple. Okay, so we've got California mussels, and in our tide pool, they're going to be growing in a cluster. Next, let's talk about sea stars. They are not starfish. They don't swim around. They are sea stars. And you'll notice a lot of these creatures, they're named by their color, which I thought was so fun in high school. So a sea star is... I start with a central point, and the great thing is they stick their arms all over the place. So you don't have to be very precise. And then you just draw five little lines. That's the middle of each arm. And then what you're going to do is draw around each of those lines. And remember, these are your rough lines. They don't have to be perfect. And if one leg is a little fatter than the other, not a big deal. To finish it off, they have a lot of little spots on them, kind of spiny bits. And so when you're drawing a sea star, sometimes you'll find them on the rocks and They've got arms going all sorts of directions. So they might be huddled up next to each other. They might be wrapped around a rock. And do you know what their favorite food is? Those California mussels. Sea stars love finding clusters of California mussels. So you can go ahead and draw sea stars and mussels together. Then when you're done, we take our black pen and look at how much easier it is to see when you can take your black pen. We're trying to use tools that you might find around your house every day. Nothing fancy. And we'll throw in a few little dots. There we go. And we've got a nice, nice sea star ready to eat those California mussels. Um, on this other sea star, 
I'm going to show you actually how I would erase the pencil. Now, when I professionally draw, I prefer using a light table. You could use a window. But what a light table does is it shines light from behind, and then I use a second piece of paper, and then I never have to erase. Whereas if you're drawing with a pencil, you're going to have to erase. And so from the point that I've drawn my main outline, I like to come in with a nice soft eraser. And the best technique for erasing is you hold your hand down on one side and then long, smooth strokes in one direction. And you can erase the pencil. When you scrub back and forth, you're more likely to ruin the paper. You're just there, eh, and it rips a hole in the paper. So I didn't get all of the pencil, but that's okay. You can see how I got most of it. Once I've erased most of the pencil, then I come back and I add my other details back in. Sometimes when you're working with really fine lined drawing pens, when you go back into erase, if you've already added your details, sometimes it smudges the details or it makes the ink less dense. And so it's a good idea to erase a lot of your rough lines before you go back in and add the details. So we've done ochre sea stars and they come anywhere from orangey color, which is where it gets the word ochre, to a purpley color. Okay, so we've got California mussels, ochre sea stars. Let's do a purple sea urchin and a giant green anemone. So a purple sea urchin, if you don't know what those are, I've always thought they're pretty cool. And they like eating barnacles. So they look like a spiky ball. And you can tell how turbulent the water is by how long their spines are. So if they have nice long spines, then they're out in water that's not sloshing back and forth a lot. But if they have really short spines, then they've, they're in a water like right up near closer to the edge of the water where it's really rough and it's the waves are hitting it frequently and so it's breaking the spines shorter. So they look like little spike balls. And the way you make it look like a spike ball is longer spines on the outside, shorter spines as you get closer to where they're going to be stuck on the rocks. Um, a giant green anemone, there are two views on a giant green anemone. Those are the critters that they look like a worm with kind of a tube and then kind of like a mushroom they've got little feelers so you're going to start with instead of a circle shape you're going to start with more of a square for the neck and then got this top with these little feelers and then when you touch it if you've ever gone to a tide pool and touched an anemone then that's when they kind of close up and they look like this weird little, I don't know, it just kind of closes all together and they'll suck on your finger. Doesn't hurt, but it looks a little strange. That's what they look like from the side. And sometimes they get little bits of shells and stuff stuck to them. And that's just part of who they are. From the top, they look very strange. They've got this mouth in the middle, which is where all the feelers are going to bring the food. And so then the little feelers go out from the center. And so you've got a couple rolls of little feelers. And then it's nice and smooth in here. And then when you touch it, it all kind of sucks back in towards the middle. And it's hard to tell, kind of looks like a donut. So we've got our urchins and our giant green anemones. So when I go back in to, to draw the black lines, an urchin is going to have, try to keep the spines 
on each level all about the same length. And the first point that I put my pen down, it makes it a little thicker. And then as I pull out, I'm lifting up and that's what's giving me kind of the pointy shape to it. And then my next row, I'm just adding lots of little spines. Notice they all go out. So you don't want them going every direction. You want them all facing out from the center. And they get shorter and shorter as they get closer to the horizon line. So you got this little spike ball of an urchin. And there are places on the Oregon coast, um, especially the southern Oregon coast, I forget the name of the beach, but there are so many sea urchins that they've actually ground their own little holes into the rocks. It's pretty cool. So there's our, there's our sea urchin. And then here's our anemone. And we'll give it a little bit of bits of stuff stuck to it just to break it up. And this time, looks like kind of a fuzzy mushroom and it sticks to the rocks. And then here's his, his buddy closed up. Someone was sticking their finger in him. What they like is they like to catch little bits when the water is washing over them. They like to catch little, little things floating by, like maybe a little fish. Yeah, it's a beautiful little fish. And as the fish touches their sticky little tentacles, then it sucks the fish in and shoves it down into its mouth. So from the top, we've got the View, and they've got little tentacles and you can make them a little bit longer tentacles so if they look a little more wavy that's up to you it takes longer to draw so we're trying to keep it quick in these little videos okay so then a little fish swims by and then it all kind of closes up and it just looks like a weird green donut that's fuzzy in the middle. All right. And so the way we would tell what that is, is more when we get into coloring, where it might be darker in the edges. And then the lighting changes. And can use some greens. They have a nice vibrant green color to them. Um, or they come in a couple other colors. Okay, so we've got a giant green anemone. We've got our purple sea urchin. Let's do, really quickly, purple shore crab. And the purple shore crabs are the little crabs that run around. Um, they're, they're not very big. They might get about that big. So... You can start with kind of a circle, but they're actually a little bit more of a more of a weird hexagony shape. They've got little eyes, and then they've got eight legs. And from the top, you can't see very well. They've got you know their big pincher claws, front set of legs. Go forward and then their back legs are gonna go like this and so they have three segments per leg so each segment is just a little oval and their legs aren't too big got these powerful back legs to help them dig and hold on to the rocks. And so when we are drawing it in nice and dark, get their little eye stalks. And we get that distinct crab body shape. 
remember it was a circle, they have a little bit of a ridge in the middle. And you don't have to be exact. Those big pincher claws for catching little bits of stuff wandering by. There we go. Got the back legs, powerful back legs for digging into the sand and holding onto rocks as the waves crash around them. And there we've got our little purple shore crab. Sometimes their legs are kind of tucked in even more so that they can be nice and tight because having lots of long legs like this when waves are crashing around you, those poor little legs are not necessarily going to live very long. So they'll tuck their little legs and keep them out of sight. Okay, black turban snail. It's a snail and it's black. <laughs> and it's kind of a stubby snail. So to do a black turban snail, notice that I started with this kind of, it's an oval shape that looks sort of like an egg. And it's got the center of it up here and then it just kind of goes like this. The cool thing about black turban snails is they aren't totally black. Usually the part here in where the spiral ends tends to be very white and shiny. So I'm going to erase my pencil lines and I'll show you. We'll talk about coloring in a bit. But it's going to be black all around here, but then it tends to be white right there in the middle. So that's how you can tell that it's a black turban snail. And drawing these is far more fun when you actually are sitting next to a tide pool on a sunny spring day and you find one of these critters and then you're drawing it right there. So in my high school marine biology class, our teacher would take us a couple of times a year down to the jetty or to a pier or somewhere and he had diving gear and he would dive down and find the deeper water critters, bring them up for us and then we'd get to identify them or for me, I'd get to draw them. But with tide pools, you can draw it without getting too deep. Okay, black turban snail, oh a keyhole limpet. I'll go ahead and draw that right here as well. It's pretty easy to draw. A keyhole limpet looks like half of a shell that's stuck to a rock. It's flat and a keyhole limpet has a hole and it's got these striped lines. And so if you see it from the side, so if it's stuck on a rock, it looks kind of like that. It's that weird flat shell that's just kind of stuck to the rock. And basically underneath there's just this one big sucking foot and it just suction cups onto the rock and then it's grinding at whatever is stuck to the rock. So they, they do move, they're just not very fast. They're kind of just stuck there. So a keyhole limpet, there's lots of different kinds of limpets. Keyhole limpet is probably the easiest to draw because it's got this keyhole and then these thin little lines that all go back towards the keyhole. I'm going to use my pencil this time to fill it in because they're just kind of a grayish white color. Pretty simple. 
And an acorn barnacle, those are the little barnacles, the small barnacles that cover everything on the coast. There's bigger barnacles, which are um, the gooseneck barnacles and a couple of different varieties of barnacles, but acorn barnacles are those basic little barnacles that you just see everywhere. And if you look at real close at a barnacle, I'll just draw it over here, really close up at a barnacle from the top, they've got a little beaky kind of shell mouth, and then they've got their body that sticks to the rock. So from above, they look like this. And that down in there, that's where they filter out their food. So when the waves are washing over them and there's water coming over them, then they'll open up and they'll stick out their little feelers. So from the side, draw a little barnacle. There we go. They'll open up a little bit and you'll see little teeny feelers waving in the water, trying to get whatever particles are floating in the waves. And so there's our, there's a little barnacles. They sure hurt when you step on them barefoot. So I would not recommend that. But you've got your barnacles. There they are with the limpet. And this is a really up close. The acorn barnacles tend to be a lot smaller than this. All right. So I've shown you how to draw most of the little critters. Thanks for drawing with us today. We're going to have some other fun drawing lessons on video. So come back and we'll explore some more of things that we want to draw. Have a great day drawing. Thank you.